I'm not normally given to complaining about things on this channel. I'll leave that to others. But after a few weeks of using this Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, I'm recommending you don't buy one. I really can't recommend it. And this isn't some cheap clickbait trick to get you to watch my video. This drone promises an awful lot, but for professional operators, people who've got deliverables to a client for surveys, inspections and so on, this falls very short and I don't think it's fit for purpose. I've spent a lot of my hard earned cash on this and you need to know what it does and doesn't do before you spend yours. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. If you've been searching YouTube to find out if the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced is any good, you'll have found loads that show its great zoom and thermal image and video features. And there'll be lots of wow, it's great, blah, blah, blah. And it is. What this drone does is incredible. The RGB and IR camera sensors have a great spec. And what you see on the smart controller display on here is stunning in both visible and IR views. You get this half inch 48 megapixel camera with a four times lossless optical zoom and there's a 32 times digital zoom as well. And a radiometric thermal or IR sensor 640 by 512 pixel resolution with a two degrees C accuracy, 16 times zoom and a 30 hertz refresh rate. Oh, and it's got an RTK option, something you can bolt on here as well, but I didn't go for that. Impressive specs, but they only tell you what it does, not what it doesn't do. Now, obviously, this doesn't make toast, and the spec doesn't say it doesn't make toast, but there's an explicit expectation that a camera will take a picture or a video, and what you see through the viewfinder is what you've just taken a picture or video of. And that isn't what this drone does. What you see on the smart controller display, as impressive as it may be, is not what ends up on the SD card on here. Let me explain. So here's a screen recording of the smart controller. The buttons on the left allow you to choose visible, split or IR view on the display. So I'll start off invisible and take a photo at one time zoom. What you get on the SD card is two images, an 8000 by 6000 15.9 meg RGB image and a 640 by 512 1.2 meg thermal or IR image. So far that's exactly what you'd expect. So if I zoom in two times the display zooms in, all very nice and this should be lossless because it's within the optical zoom range of the camera. I take another photo and you get two images. But hang on, they're still the same zoom level as before. The display zoomed in, but the captured images haven't. So let's try four times. Same again, the display zoomed in, but the captured images haven't. Now zoom level eight, this is now in the digital zoom range. Same again, the display is zoomed in, but the captured images are the same. No zoom. Zoom 16 exactly the same the display zoomed in but the images haven't and finally we go to zoom level 32 and take a photo exactly the same so this is all really odd i would have expected the images on the sd card to be at the same zoom level as on the smart controller display but clearly they're not and that sort of makes it useless for a visible inspection Sure, you can see it on the display, zoomed in, but the captured images are all fully zoomed out. Now, I'd understand it if the images only went to four times zoom to match the optical zoom capabilities of the camera, and after that, you needed to do your own digital editing to zoom in further. I know the images are big, you know, the 8K by 6K pixels, so you can zoom in very close using Photoshop and not lose as many details as you would do with a regular camera. But why the hell don't the images capture what is obviously seen through the four times zoom lens? It's mighty confusing and mighty useless. So let's try IR view on the same display and do the same thing again. 
zoom level one first. Notice that the IR display has got its own zoom button separate to the visible zoom buttons. So we'll take a photo again and you get two images at zoom level one, an RGB image and an IR image that are the same resolution of file size that we had before. So let's try zoom level two. Again, two images and they aren't zoomed in, but the display has. Zoom four, try again, exactly the same. And zoom eight, exactly the same. And finally, zoom 16, which is the highest the IR display mode goes. Yet again, two images as we had at zoom level one. So now I'll try split mode. The display shows both the visible and the IR view as a split screen. So take a photo at zoom one and we get three images, an RGB and an IR and this weird aspect ratio split photo. The RGB and IR image sizes and resolutions are exactly the same as before. And the split view is 1280 by 960 pixels with a 655K file size. Okay, that's a bit odd, but I sort of get it because it's split view. So let's try two times zoom. Any guesses? Weirdly, the split image is now zoomed in on both IR and visible at zoom level two. And there's still the separate IR and RGB images as before. Same resolution, same size. Zoom four, try again. And the split image is zoomed in. It's sort of working. But if you look at the split image, they're digitally zoomed. Zoom eight, yep, split image is zoomed in. And finally, we got zoom level 16, yet more digitally zoomed in split image and the same RGB and the same IR image. In terms of deliverables to the client, the split image is mostly useless. The non-zooming IR is sort of fine because digitally zooming 640 by 512 pixels will be such low resolution anyway. But the RGB images up to four times zoom not being available is useless as a deliverable. And quite honestly, this is a totally hopeless implementation of the fantastic capabilities of the sensor. And by the looks of things, it's firmware related and not a physical thing. Surely the image sensor is behind the lens and captures what the lens projects onto it. I don't even understand how they've got this to work. Let's see what happens in video mode. Maybe it's a bit better. So I've done the same tests switching between the display modes, visible IR and split, and looking at the video that's been saved on the SD card. In all cases, you get a 1920 by 1080 RGB video and a 640 by 512 IR video. And as you zoom in through the four zoom levels available, the RGB video zooms in, but the IR video doesn't. And that sort of makes sense to me. The RGB part of the camera and the sensor is the one that's got the four times optical zoom. As I keep saying, enterprise drones like this are about the deliverables to the client. That's what they're paying for. And for inspections using either RGB or IR, that may just be a bunch of images or as a report that contains the images. Either way, the four times optical zoom that promises so much is utterly useless. After playing with this, when it first arrived, things looked fantastic and promised so much. But I got very confused by all the identical images that were stored on the SD card on here. There were no zoomed images. So I assumed I was being stupid. And if there's some setting that I'm missing that magically makes this work, please let me know in the comments and I'll stop taking the stupid pills. Now, one other thing you need to be aware of like all other DJI Enterprise drones, this uses the Pilot app, in this case on the smart controller. And because it's a different app to the Go4 or the Fly app, it's got different features. It all looks very familiar, but it's quite different. Most people are surprised they don't have any of the smart flight modes like Orbit or Active Tracking. Yeah, it's annoying, but these are different apps built on different code bases. To be honest, the only thing missing that would have been useful is something like Orbit or Point of Interest that makes capturing images for 3D modeling a lot easier. 
And remember the pilot app has all the mapping mission modes as well, you know, the grids and the waypoint for surveys, search and rescue and so on. But there are some serious emissions and restrictions. In video mode, you can choose 3840 by 2160 or 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. And that's the only thing you can change. The thermal camera size and RGB format are disabled and you can't change them. Okay, I guess, but it's not ideal. The video camera settings next. Well, it's all auto and everything apart from EV or exposure value is disabled. The only way to tweak exposure is using EV. Very poor indeed. Even the Mavic Mini has full manual camera exposure settings and that's a $300 drone. This is more than 10 times that price. That's pretty poor. So switching to photo mode, you can choose single shot, interval or panorama. You only get sphere though by the looks of it. Image format and ratios are all disabled and that means you don't even have raw format and that's a terrible omission. Even the Mavic Mini 2, again a $300 drone, has got raw. And there's some other settings like timestamps on the images and video which is kind of useful for reports and things. So all in all a pretty awful and limiting set of options and no raw format for images is really bad as far as I'm concerned. And there's more. In video mode, if you try to zoom in and you're on 4K mode, you get this helpful message. You have to switch to 1080 mode before you can zoom. And this is suspicious because it suggests the zooming on this display and the saved video on the SD card is digitally zoomed and not using the lossless four times optical zoom. DJI provide a proprietary thermal analysis tool that you can download from their website, but it's for Windows only. Some people are confused that the IR image on the SD card is just a JPEG. Well, that's just the file extension name. All the radiometric data is embedded in the file, which means you can load them up and find and measure temperature hotspots and averages for an area and so on. And there's a whole load of tools. But it's not industry standard, so thermographers won't like it. And the implementation is a bit squiffy and it feels very unfinished. The program fonts are wrong and overlap text and edit boxes, which is a bit of a schoolboy programming error. You can export the marked up image and create a report in Word format, but that just crashes with a fatal error, unfortunately. I tried it on a few PCs and it's definitely a bug that needs sorting out. It all feels like this was rushed out and not properly tested. What's a real shame is this drone has huge potential. The sensor is fantastic and it could be a real game changer. But that's completely spoilt by really poor implementation of the image management and processing. Has this been done deliberately so it doesn't affect the M300 enterprise market? Well, who knows? What I do know is this is expensive and it does include a 48 megapixel camera, a 30 hertz 640 by 512 radiometric camera, all the usual Mavic Enterprise accessories and smart controller. And that's all for a price, even though it's expensive, that's about the same as one of the old X-T2 thermal cameras on its own. Unless the image management is fixed, and I think it's purely a firmware or app software thing, it's effectively useless. And I feel that I've been sold a pup, a very expensive pup. So I can't recommend buying one of these if you've got serious work to do. But if you're after something for search and rescue or just viewing RGB and thermal images, maybe doing some spot temperature checks on this awesome smart controller display, then it works for you. And the criticisms leveled at this not providing radiometric images post-processing isn't really fair. The images do have radiometric metadata, it's just they aren't directly usable in standard IR software workflows. As we've seen, DJI provide their own desktop tools for this, but they really aren't as mature as they should be. There's a few little bugs in there. But as an inspection and survey tool for visible IR, I really recommend you don't buy it. It can't make the deliverables. 
Will DJI update the firmware or the pilot app to fix these image and video issues? Well, I really hope so, but I'm not too confident. They have to be careful not to compete with their super expensive M300 Enterprise range. And now, I'm not sure what to do with this. If I've missed some obvious point and I'm wrong, just call me stupid and I'll take this video down. As always, thanks for watching and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you want to see more like this, remember to subscribe and hit the bell down here, wherever it is, to get notified when I post new content. And I'll see you next time.